Okay, folks, today we are going to do Atomic Theory Part 4, and I want to introduce you to the concept of the mole. The mole is a pretty important concept in chemistry. You'll hear the term quite a bit. Since this is your very first chemistry class, it's the first time you've heard it, but any chemistry class from here on out will involve the concept of the mole. So it's important that you folks understand what a mole is. Once again, it's not a cute little brown furry creature that burrows underground and annoys your dad because it ruins your yard. It's not that at all. Um, as you will learn in a subsequent chapter, an individual atom is very small. The mass of an atom is 10 to the negative 24th of a gram. Chemists have devised a system of relative atomic weights based on the element carbon as a standard. Later you're going to learn why the values in the table of atomic weights come out to be decimals. We've actually already learned that. We talked about average atomic mass, remember? and how to calculate them, which we've already done. Now, believe it or not, this will lead us up into the mole concept. So just bear with me for a minute. We aren't going to use the word mole for a little while. Uh, we're just going to talk about average atomic masses right now, and then we're going to relate that to that concept. So just hold tight, okay? So if I asked you to find the average mass of a hydrogen atom, you would not have a problem doing that. You guys are really good at finding average atomic masses. Now my periodic table says it's 1.0079 atomic mass units. I'm not sure if you can read that or not. I guess I could zoom in a little bit more, but sometimes I have a hard time uh, with the autofocus once it gets in too close. Uh, we can round these off to the nearest hundredth. That'll be perfect for me if we can go to the nearest hundredth. So for hydrogen, we're going to say 1.01 .01 atomic mass units. How about the average atomic mass of a uranium atom? So the uranium's way down here. And my periodic table, oh, it's already rounded to the nearest hundredth for me. It says 238.03. So 238.03 atomic mass units. Now these are the lightest and heaviest naturally occurring elements. Yes, there are elements that are heavier than uranium, but they are synthetic. Uranium is the largest naturally occurring um, atom. Now, compounds also have masses. It's the sum, as you would have guessed, of the mass of the individual atoms that make up the formula unit or molecule. For instance, what if I asked you to find the mass of a water molecule? Well, isn't that made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen atom? Well, sure it is. Well, hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.01. Oxygen, I would prefer writing that as 16.00, but 16.0 is okay for right now. So if we have two hydrogens and one oxygen, you can see how the total mass would be 18 atomic mass units. Now once again, AMU means atomic mass unit, and your book uses the symbol mu for that. Now don't get confused, because that's also the symbol for micro. It's a prefix that we use with the metric system and others. Um, but in this particular instance, it's going to stand for atomic mass unit. All right, so let's try a couple of these really quick. What is the formula mass of sodium chloride? Well, we have one sodium atom, and we have one chlorine atom. So all we have to do is add those masses up, don't we? So sodium's atomic mass rounded off to the nearest hundredth is 22.99, I can't read that last digit, so I'm going to look in another reference book, is 22.989. So we're going to call that 22.99, I guess. Oftentimes it's referred to as 23.0, but we'll go 22.99 atomic mass units. I will use that new symbol there. Plus the mass of a chlorine atom. And chlorine's right here, that says 35.453. We will go 35.45. So we have one sodium and one chlorine. So the mass of that compound would simply be the sum of those two. We'll use our calculators just for fun. So we have 22.99. We'll add to that 35.45. Hopefully I'm entering this incorrectly. And I get 58.44. 58.44. Four, four atomic mass units. How about glucose? C6H12O6. So we have six carbons, 
12 hydrogens and 6 oxygens. So we're going to take 6 times the mass of carbon, which I happen to know is 12.01. You can look on your periodic table to verify that for me. Plus 12 hydrogens, which we know has an atomic mass of 1.01, .01, and 6 oxygens, which is 16.00. So we'll just pull out our calculators and we will add those up. So we have 6 times 12.01 plus, I'll use my parentheses key here, 12 times 1.01, .01, close off my parentheses and add to that parentheses 6 times 16.00. So I get 180.18. 180.18. Atomic mass units. Okay, not too bad, is it? How about the formula mass of ammonia, NH3? Well, we have a nitrogen atom, only one of those, and three hydrogen atoms. So each nitrogen, we can look up its mass 14.007, I guess to the nearest hundredth, that would be 14.01, wouldn't it? Plus three times the mass of each hydrogen. 1.01, .01. so we're going to get 14.01 plus 3.03. .03. I'm going to be really daring here and do this without a calculator. Wouldn't that be 17.04 atomic mass units? You can check that just to make sure I didn't mess up. Now that calculation of formula mass is quite easy. Usually a molecular mass uh, accurate to the nearest tenth is sufficient for us. You'll notice I went to the nearest hundredth, and I think on your homework I require you to go to the nearest hundredth. It might be a bit of an uh, overkill, but, but uh, you can do it. I know you can. Now remember there's a difference between formula mass and molecular mass. The difference not, is not too significant at this time, so don't worry about it. For now it's alright to use the terms molecule and formula unit to represent the same thing. Although hardcore chemists might get upset if we did that, but you know what? We're going to stick it to them, okay? All right, now the mole again. So we're back to the mole, aren't we? Now this is a very important concept. It's new to virtually all of us. Listen closely and make sure you ask questions uh, as we go along. Now you might need to pause this and digest what we've learned and, and, and watch how I do things two or three times to make sure that you're following. Now one mole of a substance is defined as following, as the following. So one mole is the amount of substance that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those particles. Now we call those fundamental particles, and those could be atoms in chemistry, molecules, or ions. Now, actually a fundamental particle could be anything. We could be talking about gorillas, or grains of sand, or pennies. But for this class, it will primarily refer to atoms and molecules. Now that's a big number. Let's write that out longhand, out of scientific form, just to get an idea as to how big that is. It's 6, 0, 2, 2, and let's see, we've gone three decimal places so far. We have to go 20 more, so we have to have 20 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I moved a total of 23 decimal places to get to there. So we usually write it as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, to go from here to here is 23 places. That's a big number, isn't it? So you might be saying to yourselves, Hummer, why are we using such a stinking big number in chemistry? Why don't we just use, I don't know, a dozen? That means 12. Everybody knows a dozen means 12. Why don't we use a dozen? Well, think about it. Do you think a dozen atoms would give you very much of that element? Probably not, because atoms, you know, are ridiculously small. However, a mole of atoms now would be something you could actually see and you could find the mass of. The number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is so large that it's hard to comprehend. For instance, if I spread one mole of marbles, just typical children's marbles, over the surface of the entire earth, it would produce a layer of marbles about three miles thick. Or if we did the same thing with soda pop cans, it would cover the entire earth to a depth of 200 miles of soda pop cans. What possible use could such a large number have? 
Well, when you pick up a penny, you're holding close to 10 to the 22nd atoms. Believe it or not, when you pick up a penny, you've got that many atoms in your hand. A teaspoon of water, which is about 5 milliliters, contains 2 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. It is convenient to have a special unit for describing such large numbers of objects, especially when those objects are so small. Now, the abbreviation for mole is MOL. That's it. You get to save one whole letter. So let me ask you a couple of questions. We'll keep it really simple to begin with. If I had a mole of people, how many people would there be? Well, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd people. Right? That would be one mole of people. I have no idea where we'd put them or how deep we would have to stack those people on planet Earth to fit them, but that's how many people we would have. What if I had two moles of gorillas? How many gorillas would that be? Well, let's apply a little bit of dimensional analysis here. Two moles of gorillas. All right, let's get out of moles of gorillas. So we're going to stick that on the bottom. And we're going to get into just plain old gorillas. Uh, for now, we're always going to put the number one by mole in our conversion factor. Just do that all the time and you'll be safe. And there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gorillas in a mole of gorillas. That's called Avogadro's number, by the way. So let's do the math here. Let's see what we get. We have 2, oh, let's clear that out. 2 times 6.022, second EE to the 23rd, enter. Looks like we have 1.204 times 10 to the 24th gorillas. Am I writing on the on screen here? I hope so. It's a lot of gorillas, isn't it? I hate to clean up all time. Now, do you think we can do the same thing with atoms and molecules? Yeah, you think right, we can. So chemists are concerned with el are concerned with elements and compounds as they react with one another. The fundamental particle, remember we talked about fundamental particles a minute ago? Of an element is an atom. The fundamental particle for a compound is a molecule, or a formula unit if we're talking about ionic compounds. It turns out, this is very important, that the atomic mass, remember the atomic mass we were just calculating on the previous pages? of an element in grams contains Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of individual atoms. Think about that. Rewind it. Listen to what I just said. That is very important. The molecular mass of a compound in grams, so not an element this time, but a compound like water or glucose or ammonia, contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd individual molecules. So if I know the atomic mass in grams of an element or compound, I have this many of those atoms of that element or molecules of that compound. Think about that and digest it. Now once again, that number is known as Avogadro's number. It's named after the person who calculated its value. So one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd fundamental particles, atoms or molecules for us. It's also the atomic mass in grams. So let's just do a couple of these on this video, and then we'll do a bunch more on the next video, and we'll even do some from your homework, okay? How many grams does it take to make one mole of copper? Well, let's find copper on our periodic table. Here it is, copper, 63.546, so that we'll say 63.55. So 63.55 grams would give me one mole of copper atoms, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. See, that's the atomic mass of copper in grams. So how many atoms is, is this? It's Avogadro's number of atoms. If I have its atomic mass in grams. Now, did I just say that this is the mass of one mole of any element? Nope. That only works for copper. Here. 
What if I wanted to find out how many grams it takes to make one mole of sodium chloride? Remember sodium chloride from the previous page? Let's look up its atomic mass. Flash back to an earlier page, see if I can find it. Here we go, I've got it. Isn't it 58.44 atomic mass units? So the atomic mass in grams, so 58.44 grams of sodium chloride, table salt, would give me one mole of table salt. Or, how many molecules? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of NaCl. Okay? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, in the next video, we're going to use not-so-pretty numbers, and we'll be able to do some more calculations. So stay tuned. This next part's really important. All right. Hope you enjoyed that brief discussion on the mole concept. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.